ever, ever once met my husband and said anything like, um, hey, how'd you get so lucky? <laughs> ever. No one has it's ever Sunday morning on and CBS, like and like here again ever. is Jane Pauley. Not surprisingly, Kathy Griffin is no longer married. And that's not the only thing that's changed. There's the notorious photograph that changed everything. This morning, she answers questions from Luke Burbank. And be warned, many will find the photo we just mentioned disturbing and offensive. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kathy Griffin. If you heard the name Kathy Griffin and were considering skipping this part of the show, Kathy Griffin, of all people, says she'd understand. And, I, and I'm very aware that there may be some people that don't want to watch the story. They want to fast forward through it, and they feel like they've had enough of me, and that's the beauty of America. That's okay with me, too. Doesn't hurt We're, me. of course, hoping you choose to keep watching, but for her part, Griffin has gotten pretty used to rejection from a certain segment of the U.S. population. I, I'm Hanoi Jane. You know, I get it. This photo is going to be with me forever, no matter what I do. The photo, now infamous, was taken in 2017 and featured Griffin holding a mask of President Donald Trump dripping with what appeared to be fake blood. Comics have a real role in social expression. I started thinking about that Megyn Kelly thing. Blood coming out of her eyes, blood coming out of her everywhere. This is fake blood, just so you know. The, the fake blood was actually ketchup. Why, yeah. why did you guys go with ketchup? Well, I didn't have any fake blood. I usually don't stock it, so. <laughs> Griffin says the photo was meant as political satire, but that didn't stop all hell from breaking loose. This is vile and wrong. Disgusting, but not surprising. It was done to provoke. Creating a backlash. She's now seeing the reaction. If the president don't... reacted, tweeting, Kathy Griffin should be ashamed of herself. My children, especially my 11-year-old son, Baron, are having a hard time with this. Sick. Even Griffin's 98-year-old mother was upset with her. And so she called me up and she said, I thought I heard that you were in Al-Qaeda, and why wouldn't you join another club? Griffin was used to controversy, but this was on a whole other level. I never in my lifetime thought anything like this could happen. Caught off guard by the visceral response, she went into crisis management mode. I sincerely apologize. I am just now seeing the reaction of these images. I'm a comic. I cross the line. I move the line. Then I cross it. I went way too far. But the damage was done. Her comedy tour was canceled. She lost her endorsement deal with something called Squatty Potty. It puts us in the squat, unkinking our colons, making it easier to go. So get yourself a Squatty Potty. And stop being so full of shit. And on a more serious note, she found herself, she says, under investigation for conspiracy to assassinate the President of the United States, a charge that potentially carries a life sentence. My little story is historic, whether you like it or not. It's the first time a sitting United States president has, you know, used the full power of the Oval Office, the first family, the right-wing media, and more importantly, two departments within the Department of Justice to open an investigation on a private citizen who did nothing wrong, didn't violate the First Amendment, didn't break the law. I'm going to be honest, he broke me. He broke me. Griffin says her name ended up temporarily on a no-fly list. And CNN fired her from her long-running gig, co-hosting their New Year's Eve special with Anderson Cooper. Year, Kathy Griffin and me for the next three I'm not talking to you. I really did love Anderson, and I really loved doing that gig, and it was a lot of fun. And, you know, they just couldn't get over it. Like, what would you be without your comedy? I thought about that a lot, and I thought about it immediately. So one of the first things I did was I wrote a couple of scripts that I'm not even in. I thought, I can do that. You know, and I thought, well, maybe somebody will buy a script for me if it doesn't say Kathy Griffin. But even without her name attached, Griffin says there was little interest. And this is the part of the story where a lot of people, as rich as she is, would have just gone into early retirement. But not Kathy Griffin. But I thought, well, I know how to be funny. And I know, I know how to get people to buy tickets. Because I'm pretty sure there's a whole bunch of countries overseas that really don't like Trump. And that's how it all started. So she hit the road again but only after taking control of her business, learning how to book every element of it herself, 
from renting the theaters to marketing the shows to hiring the ushers. So I started with the overseas portion first, and I believe it was, um, gosh, I forgot now, but I think it was 13 countries and 26 cities. And then I thought, okay, I'm on to something. And you made like over $4 million off yeah. of that? Yeah, the world tour grossed $4.4 .4 million, and yet I don't have a single day of paid work on television ahead of me for the rest of my life. But she'll always have the stage. Her world tour became the basis for her new comedy special called Kathy Griffin, A Hell of a Story. Here's what I've learned from this experience. It turns out um, there is such a thing as bad publicity. <laughs> Griffin has won all kinds of awards for her TV work and comedy specials. These should be more prominent. I don't even like that they're backed up that much. But she's still looking for a distributor for this new film, which may serve as a reminder that her life might never go back to how it used to be. I would say, no joke, about a third of the death threats that came in the old-timey mail to my house had actual real return addresses. Are you still getting death threats to this day? Yes, online and in person. I was in London a month ago, and um, I had a driver, and he recognized me from the photo, and he said that he was from Morocco, and that if we were in Morocco, he would cut my tongue off. So that was a long drive. What kind of rating did you give that driver? <laughs> I called the president of the company and had him fired. Wow. How long have you lived here? Um, I've lived here two and a half years. Can we just take a look at this pool? Despite what she's been through, or what some might argue she put herself through, Griffin says she doesn't want anyone feeling sorry for her. It's heaven. I'm not going to lie, it's heaven. After all, she does live in a ten and a half million dollar mansion in Bel Air, California, that she paid for in cash. And she's comforted by her two rescue dogs, who didn't miss their chance to be on national television. This is Olivia Benson. That's Elliot Stabler. They are detectives for the NYPD uh, Special Victims Unit. And honestly, they have been game changers. Like, I know I sound really corny, but I do everything wrong. I let them sleep in bed with me. I cuddle with them, and I feel their little heartbeats uh, uh, against me. And they've, they've really gotten me through, honestly. What about therapy? Oh, yeah. I go to therapy as much as I can. Yeah. I've been doing that since I was 18. I mean, the therapy sessions were like how to just put one foot in front of the other. And she says it was fellow comedian Jim Carrey who called her out of the blue with some much needed advice. And I, this phrase just always stuck with me. He goes, you're going to take as long as time as you need to process it, and then you're going to put it through your Kathy Griffin comedy prism, and you're going to make the story funny and relatable, and you're going to go tell it. So thank you, Jim Carrey. Now that there's some light at the end of the tunnel, Kathy Griffin, so, I mean, at 58, really says she's done well apologizing. Uh, if you could click your heels together and go back and just like have at the end of the photo shoot before the mask came out, could have just been like, let's call it a day? Yeah. Would you? No, because I've learned so much. I think a lot of people would love it if I said, oh, I wish I'd never taken that picture. I wish I'd never cursed. I wish I'd never made this comment or that comment. But the most important thing that uh, I hope people see is that long after I kick the bucket, they see the crazy red-haired lady didn't go down. One of the things I want you to take away from tonight is I'm Kathy Griffin and I never learned my lesson. Yeah.